Please stand and join me as we sing our opening hymn number 25, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Gracious Heavenly Father, thanks be to you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. May we look to you always for guidance. May you be our navigator as we go through this life. May we always see and hear in our hearts and minds that prayer in which Jesus taught us as we join together in saying, Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
our prayer list this morning, I ask for special prayers for Doug Peterson today. Uh, he has entered into hospice. Please remember him. Brothers and sisters, we lay the other concerns along with those that weigh heavy on our hearts. We lay those before Christ at his table. Let us continue our worship. Let us pray. Gracious God, you are the ultimate gift giver. From the very first breath we take to the last one we release, we are blessed by your presence. Compassionate Lord, you hear the sight of each one who reaches out to you this morning. And it is no accident that we have found ourselves here in this place. Your concern reaches to wherever we might have been and wherever we might be in this very moment. O oh Lord, we find that you are the one who reaches out to us in a surprising word, in a casual conversation, a glimmer of a new thought, the words of a song that speaks to our hearts, or in a prompting that leads us to a deeper connection with you. Gracious God, for some of us, our needs have drawn us here, and we offer to you our concerns. For those living on the edge of the unknown, for those living with an illness that narrows life choices, for the ones who worry constantly about a loved one's life path, for those who know discouragement, loving God. We offer, offer all of our burdens to you in this moment of silence.
Remind us, O God, that you are the one that invites us not only to the comfort of prayer, but also to this place of care where our lives can offer the gift of compassion. This week, give us the courage to speak a word of grace when it may not be easy to speak, to be a listening ear when we are tempted to give easy advice, to reach out with a secret act of service that may never be discovered. O oh God, we pray these things in the name of the one who showed us a life built and sustained by prayer, Christ Jesus, in whose name we pray. As we come to this time of stewardship, October was stewardship month and we just finished it. And we ask that during that time you might consider your gifts to the church. Usually the stewardship month is usually more focused on the monetary part of it. And that's very important. We do need to keep our church doors open and our building in good repair and our missions going forward. But there's another gift, and that is the gift of time. God gives us time. God gives time to us with certain expectations of how well we'll use it. However, our free will allows us to do whatever we want to with it, good or bad. We can cherish our time, but we can also neglect it. We can hoard our time but we can also share it. We can invest our time, but we also can squander it. May God guide us on how we use our time.
Most gracious Heavenly Father, we ask that you will bless these gifts that we bring forth to you, those through this week. May you bless our gift of time as we use it to serve your will, to bring your love to the world, and to show others of your loving ways and bring them to you. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Today we're going to do something a little different. Since all of you can't fit in the choir loft, we'll let you be the choir out there. And you have an insert in your bulletin. If you look, it says, everybody sing praise to the Lord. It's, it's very easy, very repetitious. So we're going to sing it twice. You're going to join with us, everybody together singing twice through, everybody sing praise to the Lord. Okay, Marilyn, give us an intro. Everybody sing praise to the Lord. 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 For he is so wonderful. Now the choir is going to sing it through a couple of times. And then we have a little chorus to tack on to go with it. Then we're going to come back to this piece, everybody sing praise to the Lord, and the choir has a desk camp, so we're going to put them both together. I'll try to yell or throw something at you when it's your turn to sing, just like choir practice. <laughs> Everybody sing praise to the Lord. Join with us. Everybody sing praise to the Lord. Everybody sing praise to the Lord. For he is so wonderful. Everybody sing praise to the Lord. Everybody sing praise to the Lord. Everybody sing praise to the Lord. 
keep an eye on Gary. <laughs> oh, the greatest choir director in the world. Amen. <laughs> this morning's gospel lesson comes from Mark chapter 12, verses 38 and following. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and to have the best seats in the synagogues and place of a, places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' home, houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down, Jesus, opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more in than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In this gospel lesson, <clears throat> Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings, the temple offerings, were being gathered. And he watched the crowd putting in their money into the temple treasury. Many wealthy people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and she put in two very small copper pennies worth only a fraction of a penny. And calling his disciples to him, Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all of the others. They gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything she had to live on. You know, this is one of the best known stories in the gospel. And rightfully so. It is a story of extraordinary faith and commitment. You see, widows in biblical times lived in extreme, extreme times. In the book of James, the first church in Jerusalem was instructed that their first priority in ministry is this. Religion that our God, our Father, accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after the orphans and widows in their distress. Some of you here may know of such distress. There is the emptiness, the loneliness, and sometimes there is financial difficulties as well. But at least most widows today are somewhat provided for. But not so in Bible times. A widow was completely dependent on her family. She could not, not inherit from her husband. That went to the firstborn son. Thus, if she had no children, she returned to her own father's house if he were living. And if she had no family, she was in terrible shape. You see, there were no jobs for widows. There was no social security system, no welfare system. And it's common knowledge today that many single mothers fall below the poverty line. Hmm. The 
plight of widows in biblical times, which was much more desperate. They were literally in danger of starving to death. You may remember the story um, of the widow who encountered the prophet Elijah. She was going about her daily routine of gathering up sticks to make a fire so she could feed her son and herself. Elijah asked the woman for a drink of water and a piece of bread. And she replied that she had only enough flour and oil for one last meal to feed herself and her son. She and the lad literally lived on bread and water, and it was almost gone. You know, you and I, we cannot imagine such desperate circumstances. Do you remember the story of Ruth and Naomi? Naomi and Ruth, gleaning for wheat in Boaz's fields. Can you imagine being dependent on the little bit of wheat that harvesters left as your only source of food and income? Think of all the backbreaking work involved in gleaning in that field. And here, the widow that Jesus observed was also in desperate circumstances. And she was down to her last two coins, a fraction of a penny. What amazing faith. You see, the widow believed her gift would make a difference. And what she was giving might have seemed very small to her neighbors, but like the little boy that we talked about recently, who gave his fishes and loaves to the master, this widow believed her gift would make a difference. Widows. Our congregation does a wonderful ministry to widows, to those who are in need. Wilbur and Peggy every month Organize the cookie ministry to our shut-ins. What a wonderful ministry. When I take the cookies, and I think the Beasleys wouldn't mind, but their face lights up because you remember them. And they look forward to that. Such a wonderful ministry. This congregation, with its helping hands, takes care of our members in desperate need. We have a new ministry started for people that are led to work with foster children. And... We're painting the room and preparing it for that wonderful ministry. I want you to think about that for a minute. Foster parents. Children in really bad situations are placed with foster parents. And I'm learning that some of these foster parents aren't the wealthiest people that are doing this. And the Escovitos, in coming up with that ministry are helping these people provide for foster children, not orphans. I don't know, maybe some are, I don't know. Widows and orphans. We also have the ministry, we're supporting Safe Haven. And that's a wonderful ministry as well. Single mothers. Some are in very abusive relationships and this is a place where they can find refuge and begin to get their life together. We support that ministry as well. But the one thing that's taken my breath away in my youth group on Wednesdays, uh, when I went in to the room this past week, their spokesman, Virginia, 
said, I saw that you're preaching a message for us, widows. And our widows in this congregation contribute mightily in their time and with their finances to the ongoing of Jesus' ministry. And I'd like for the congregation to celebrate and to give them thanksgiving with an applause. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your support. You are loved. And know that Christ's presence is with you in a very special way. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks for the great testimony of faith, and may it inspire us to dedicate ourselves in greater ways to Christ and to one another as we stand and sing our hymn of dedication. Brothers and sisters, I remind you that Christ is the one who is at this table, and it's Christ who invites you to come. 
and receive his grace once more. All are welcome. Let us pray. You are the one true God, and we come into your presence with prayer. We lift this cup and bread before you, seeking your blessings upon it, and seeking your spirit to be poured out into our lives. Let these moments of communion be moments of renewal and rededication for us, so that our dreams and our days may be filled with your presence. Give us grace to turn away from the false gods of success and security in order, order that we may love you with all our hearts, souls, and strength. We pray in the name of the one who supremely trusted you and lived out your love, Jesus Christ. Amen.
And now we remember that on the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took the loaf, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. In the same manner, he took the cup also saying, this cup is my blood. My blood shed for you. Take and drink. Gracious God, each of us comes to this table of remembrance bearing different burdens and different thanksgivings. But at this table, we heard you say once again, we are forgiven and we are loved that we might be sent out to remind others that they are loved and they might, that they might be forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to invite you uh, Thursday at 11 o'clock uh, for a Bible study with me. And the only book that you're going to need is your personal Bible. And we're going to talk about the story of Jesus as retold by John in his gospel. I hope to see you there, 11 o'clock Thursday. And now, brothers and sisters, I hope that you know that you are loved, that you feel in your spirit that Christ is with you as you leave this place. Let us go. Amen. Amen.